ever been told to eat your greens? Well, kale just happens to be one of the most nutritious vegetables you could possibly grow. It's crammed full of vitamins and powerful antioxidants, and it's oh so delicious. Oh, and it just so happens to be the easiest brassica of all to grow. What's not to love about kale? Hi, I'm Ben, and if you couldn't tell, I'm an avid kale fan. But while kale is definitely easy to grow, there are a few crucial things to get right if you are to enjoy a truly bumper crop of health-boosting leaves. Kale comes in a stunning range of varieties, from bright greens to dark purples, crunchy leaves to crinkled beauties and everything in between. But it's not just the colour that's attractive. There are so many amazing flavours and textures to choose from that you just won't find in the grocery store. Mild, almost salad-like greens, sweet red Russian kales, or the nutty and sometimes peppery flavours of Italian kales. My personal favourite is the Tuscan kale or Cavallo Nero kale. It's also called the dinosaur kale because if you look at its leaves, it's got this beautiful, bumpy, rich texture to it. Kale is spaced quite far apart at about 18 inches or 45 centimetres, so it makes sense to start your kale off away from where it will finally grow. It's just a better use of space. The way I see it, you've got two strategies. You can sow in spring to give a crop from summer onwards, or sow in early summer to give a crop from late summer or autumn and then on through the winter. And if you're in a hot climate, you'll need to wait till early autumn to sow once it's started to cool down. So you can sow in the ground and then transplant into their final positions, but I like to start my kale off in pots or plug trays under cover away from the vegetable garden, and that reduces the risk of the seedlings being mown down by slugs or pitted by the likes of flea beetle, for example. You can sow kale into pots of all-purpose potting mix, so nice and thinly across the top and then cover with a little more of the potting mix. Or you can sow into plug trays like this, two or three seeds per plug, and then once they're up, just pull out the extra seedlings so there's one per plug so they don't get overcrowded. Now I've started some off a few weeks ago, so you can see them here. So these guys are ready to transplant into the plug trays. So talking about the two strategies for sowing, Sowing in early spring does get your kale away really quickly and you'll be cropping from really uh, summer onwards. But the kale sown in early summer, the advantage of sowing then is that you avoid a lot of their pest problems like flea beetles and those notorious caterpillars, which can be a real challenge. Also, sowing a bit later on means that you can have a crop of kale to go in from earlier crops, so you have a follow-on crop from things like early carrots or say fava or broad beans. Keep everything nice and moist and grow on until it's time to plant your kale out, usually when there's a few sets of adult leaves. If the ground is still occupied by an earlier crop, just pot them on into a larger pot to keep them ticking over. Sunshine has a direct effect on both the success and taste of kale. In cooler, more temperate climates like mine, kale will thrive in full sun. After all, it's the sunshine that powers strong, good growth. However, in hot summers, and definitely in hotter climates, you may want to grow your kale in a more shadier spot. That's because full sun in those conditions can lead to stronger, more bitter tasting leaves, and you want a nice, mild taste. Wherever you're growing your kale, it will appreciate a relatively free-draining soil that has been enriched with plenty of organic matter. And by free-draining, I mean it doesn't get overly wet and claggy during the winter months. One of the best ways to really help kale growth along is to top up mulches around the plants, the actively growing plants, in the summer months. That will help to keep the roots nice and cool and shaded, which these cool season crops will absolutely love. And then as that organic matter breaks down, it'll help to give the plants a real boost as they head into winter and then as growth takes off again in spring. Of course, plants that are properly fed and watered will have all the energy and resources they need to better withstand pest attacks, which brings us neatly on to our next topic. Okay, so one of the most notorious issues with growing brassicas of any kind, including kale, is the number of pests it attracts. 
it seems that anything and everything wants to eat it. Well, you've got clouds of white fly that take to the air once disturbed. You've also got cabbage aphids, cabbage worms or caterpillars that devour foliage with alarming efficiency, and flea beetles, which tend to affect the younger leaves, the more tender leaves in early summer. So what are the best ways to control these pests? Well, growing darker leaved or purple varieties of kale makes many of these pests stand out clearer against the leaves, so they are easier to spot and take care of. Early infestations of aphids can just be clipped off and added to the compost heap. And when it comes to the caterpillars of the cabbage white butterfly, well, you'll need to go out and inspect leaves check them over, look under the undersides of leaves, because that's where they like to hide from the birds, of course, and pick off any that you find. These can then be dispatched into a bucket of soapy water. Of course, don't forget companion plants. Nasturtiums can help to lure egg-laying butterflies away from your plants, while time is said to confuse them. Of course, the best way to deal with all of these pests is to simply cover your kale plants over with a row cover, and you can use a horticultural fleece for this, or an insect mesh, or just a butterfly netting. The great thing about kale, though, is that it's a really, really resilient plant. So if it does get hammered by any of these pests, it's very likely to spring back as soon as winter arrives and the first frosts either kill off those pests or make them hunker down for winter. Now, on the subject of resilience, I want to show you these kale I've got under these covers over here. So come and have a look. So as you can see, the kale under this cover here are well and truly stripped right down to the midribs. And that's because this garden is chock full of pigeons. I should have covered this up a long, long time ago. This cover's been in place for only about 10 days, but already the kale is putting on some really good recovery here. So I do expect to get a crop before I have to dig them up for the next crop later on in spring. It just goes to show, please do cover your crop nice and early because there is so much out to eat them. It's a lesson learned for me and next time I'll be more diligent. To harvest kale, simply take the outermost leaves and those leaves will be further down on the crown of foliage as the plant grows. Just bend them down and snap them off to one side and there you go. The younger, tender leaves of Fresh kale are delicious in salads, and of course, there are some softer leaf varieties like Red Russian that are tailor made for those salads. Kale leaves actually improve in flavour with a little bit of frost because it turns the starches into sugars, making them even more delicious. I love the black Tuscan kale, and for these sorts of kales, you just strip the leaf away from that rather tough midrib. Like that. This is great steamed or massaged with a bit of lemon juice and olive oil for salads. And of course, I love it in my regular green smoothies, a powerhouse of goodness. Like any vegetable, kale's best eaten fresh. Pick it as you use it. But if you do need to store it, it will keep in the refrigerator in a bag for up to say a week to 10 days tops. In our next episode, we're going to be extending the vegetable garden by popping in a new bed here and planting it up all from scratch. It's a really fun weekend project anyone can do, and it's sure to fire up the enthusiasm and can-do attitude for the growing season ahead. If you like the sound of that, be sure to smash that subscribe button and when and truly ding that notification bell so you don't miss out. I'll catch you next time.